Okay, students, let's uh, just quickly recapitulate what we had done the other day. We had uh, started with invitation writings. As uh, I have told you, invitations, we had formal as well as informal invitations, right? Now, for a formal invitation, it is, you know, like a sent out for a formal gathering and, of course, where uh, there is a large number of people who have been invited. So, formal invitation can be in the form of a card or in the form of a letter, right? And the card is you are sending the same kind of invitation to all the people who you are inviting. And when you write a letter, it will be for one person. Your formal invitation you are inviting as a guest of honor, as a chief guest, right? So here, seeing what the invitation is accordingly, you will, okay? Right? So you will make the invitation accordingly. So if it is for one individual, what are you going to be? You will write it as a letter to the chief guest or you can make it as a card even for one person. Right? But if it is, yes, you are inviting parents, you are inviting members of your company, your organization, institution for a formal function, then you will write. Okay, now, yes, uh, where was I? Right, so this you remember, and you have to like, uh, note down what it is that you have to. Then replying to a formal invitation. What is it that you have to do? Replying to a formal invitation. How are we going to reply to it? I discussed with you all, you will then write down the in reply in a formula. If you've been invited as a chief guest, you'll be replied in a formal letter. There is also one other way which I have told you that is just simply writing as a paragraph. And yes, what are the things we have to remember? Writing it in the third person, writing it in a very formal, polite tone, right? And yes, uh, drafting the invitation accordingly, right? What all you mentioned, the purpose of writing it. And when we are writing an invitation, first of all, we are going to accept the invitation. Like say, thank you for giving the invitation. Or then you can either, uh, you know, like accept it or decline it, okay? So what are the things we can do here? Like, for example, you have to write down, say, Mr. Arun Barma, thanks. Say this is uh, Ali Singh, right? For the invitation, right, right. Okay. Then again, Mr. Varma would be pleased to or would be delighted to be. part of the celebration or the occasion or of the function. Take it, right? So this is one other way in which you can write. So this is a little confusing. So please make this kind of a flow chart. Note down what are the things that you have to remember. Have you noted down? Please note it down. Replying to a formal invitation. Right, it can be as a formal letter and like this one. Right, so it says here, this is a simple paragraph where you are doing all the contents and everything. Okay, right. Have you noted this down? Give me yes or no. Come on. Are you listening? Are you watching? Have you noted this down? This is one question. Yes, very nice. So one person is there responding. What about the others? This is one very confusing part, replying to it. Okay? Have you noted this down? Tell me because I want to erase it and then I'm going to discuss. So, note it down, please. Note it down fast. Done? Okay. Can I erase this? 
Can I raise this part? What are the basic elements you have to remember for an invitation? An invitation here, which has to have, yes, the whole name of the host, the name of the guest, right? Location, change, time, menu. Okay, so that if you're applying, you just talk about the occasion. Right, for what purpose you have been invited for. Right, now here, when we come in the formal invitations, informal invitations, so informal invitation will also have the same content, but how are we going to write it? Invitation is for one person. It may be informal invitation is for one person, okay? Right? And so we are writing it according to the relation, according to the feeling that we have with that concerned person, okay? Right? So informal invitation is in the form of an informal letter. How do you write an informal letter? You write status address. Who's the sender? The mother address, her address, sorry, sender. Write the date, the date of writing the invitation. Then, so dear, uh, say comment. Hello, how are you? You can write that also. And after that, it gives me immense pleasure. Invite you to the say uh, seventy fifth birthday celebration of my grandfather. Okay. Then, can you see the black box? Is it visible? Okay, of my grandfather on day 31, January 2022, at our residence. And say right? Is it visible? Yes, so then here you write down your friend. Say hello. Not this down, please. Not this down. Right, and let's quickly do the reply also. Right, and because tomorrow I want to start with the next chapter, the last chapter of Vistas that we'll be discussing. Noted? Fine. Now, when I apply for an informal invitation, reply is in the Reply will also be in the form of an informal lecture. Okay, so replying to an informal invitation, informal. Everything is informal, informal. Formal is formal, formal. Okay, so there also you have to remember all those things. Now, when I reply, sender, sender would be your friend. You can send a writing address, say 17. G C uh, Green Avenue by the date. Okay. So tell all right. Now we'll change. Right? Yes. Uh, uh, how are you? 
and uh, thank you so much. So first of all, you are going to say thank you for the invitation. The thank you for the invitation, and uh, I wish your grandfather a happy and a healthy life. It would give me immense pleasure to be a part of this great celebration. Right? This is you have accepted it. Other अपने decline करना है. When we decline, so we are going to say thank you once again. Right? So thank you for the invitation. Naturally, it is a social etiquette. We have to thank people if we get uh, these invitations. So this is something that we miss about. So we will definitely tell them. Not at the last moment, telling them. Right? So here, yes. So thank you for the invitation. I wish your grandfather a happy and healthy life. And uh, right, but uh, I would not be able to be a part of the celebration because I'm going out of station that day, or I have uh, you know like uh, some other commitment. Okay, never say some other important work. That means you are showing that this is of not much importance. So you just say I have a prior appointment or a prior commitment. Right, so I cannot be part of the celebrations. Right, so looking forward to seeing you soon. Anyway, we can end this letter because it's an informal letter. So remember here, whenever we talk about invitations, what are the things that we have to do? Especially in the replies, subsequently, like the good human beings, like good relatives and good friends. What are we going to do? Thank you. Okay, so thank you. For the invitation, and I will definitely be part of the celebrations, right? Yes, and uh, uh, if you are declining it, so congratulations to your parents on their thirtieth anniversary. I would have loved to be a part of the occasion, but I have to go out of station because of some urgent work. Okay, so right, be decent, be good. This is what you have to be, not only on paper but in real life. Clear? Yeah. Any doubts about this? No doubts. Okay, so I, I think so we have time. Let's quickly just start off with the next topic. So I have wrote this down fast, quickly. So when you have to accept the invitation, thank you for the invitation and give your acceptance. Okay. When you have to decline. Thank and then decline. But when we are declining, you have to give with a reason. Clear? Note it down, please. Note this down. And again and again, I'm reminding you all. Please make sure that you have a separate notebook for English and where you have all the formats of your writing skills noted. Yes. So we have uh, our invitations. We have a report writing. We have job application. So these things that we have to discuss. So we discuss these again and again. So lots of example you have, and uh, I can say that this format also will be. Can I raise the blackboard? Have you noted down? Abhishek, Monik, Ankit, Sandeep. Have we done? Sukmani, Mansi, Pulke. Fire, Ishan, done. Okay, fine. Noted. I'm erasing the blackboard. Yes. So before I start with the, your job application, I'm just going to give you an introduction today. So that uh, we can do it in a detailed manner in the next lecture. Now, here before I start, a reminder for you all: you have your test also tomorrow. Okay, the chapter once again should visit it for me and think of beauty. There's going to be a subjective test. You're supposed to send me your PDFs, right? So send that and uh, hope you are studying well. So with that, I I don't want uh, a very low response. I want maximum. Participation. You are responsible students. You know that how important it is for you to keep on practice writing. Okay, fine. Now.
Now let's move on to the next topic. Invitations I'll be doing again and again. So in case there is any doubt left, you can always ask me. Right? Clear? So uh, next topic that we have is Mathematics 1. Application. It's not visible. It is not. So job application. Obviously, as it suggests, it is applying for a job. How do you think we apply for a job? Yes, we've seen the advertisements. Do you remember we did situation vacant advertisements? Do you remember doing situation vacant and situation wanted advertisements? Give me a yes or no if you remember. Do you remember? Yes? Yeah, good. Okay, one person remembers, and I think the others also going to remember. Now, when we get to the situation wanted and the situation vacant advertisements, so there was one line at the end. Isn't it? Apply within 10 days. Shortlisted candidates will be called for interview. Isn't it? Or apply on the given form. Right? So that means there is a way of applying for a job. Actually, after you have seen the advertisement in the newspaper, right? And you have to apply for it. How do you think we apply for a job? I, I really don't know here it's job application. Or it says a job application. But it is not a job application, it is a letter. Okay, right? Now, when we send our uh, information, you send information about yourself, thinking that you are qualified for the job, what do you call that? What do you call that? A, a, you know, a description about yourself, talking about your qualifications, talking about your achievements, your personal qualities. What would you call that? Any idea what it is called? No, ma'am, we don't know. We're not going to answer. Okay. So, when you remember, in the advertisements, you used to write, apply with by data, isn't it? Right? Submit your by data. So, by data or about resume. Yes, submitting your resumes. Yes, very good. Really well done. And of course, we also have CV. CV. That is your curriculum vitae. That is vital information about yourself. Okay. So when we apply for the job, we have to submit all this about ourselves. Now, how do we present all this? Right? So the first step is, yes, I've seen that participant in the newspaper, I see situation wanted, I see uh, like uh, a situation vacant, right? And maybe online or whatever you have, but you have to respond to it. So whether you saw it in the newspaper, whether you saw it online, so whether you're going to reply by email, or whether you're going to send an application. Now, when I write a job application, I apply for a job. How do I do that? How do I go about it? There are two parts that we are going to discuss. One is the first part is a formal letter. It's also called as the covering letter. Second is a biodata, right? Resume or RCP. So, job application it seems to be very misleading. In fact, the job application is a letter. Okay, right? So, we write a letter giving a brief uh, information about ourselves, talking about our qualifications, talking about our experience, and then along with that, we have to submit our bio data. The bio data we have detailed information in all aspects, right? What all aspects? First of all, is your personal, then you have your academic, okay? C is your 
experience. Okay, right? And of course, we also have our achievements. We have our differences. So get ready here when we are going to do our job application, it's going to be a long line of things that we need to remember. Okay, right? We can elaborate this as much as we want to, but the most important things that we have to remember, it's about your personal information we're going to give. We're going to give our academic, right? We will talk about our experience. If anybody is asked for freshness, we also apply that we skip this part. Achievements, what all have you done? throughout your academic career. Then our references, right? So people who are going to tell that yes, this person was working here, this is he was my student and bears a good character. Just like you have your verification and all done, it's when you have your passport and things, so people, they come to verify it. So your references, it's the same, okay? Right? Now, when I write my job application, it is very, very important. I know that what am I going to write in my academic qualifications. This is the most important part, which can make your application right or it can make it wrong, okay? So according to the post that has been advertised, you have to write the corresponding academic qualifications. And I, I think when we did our uh, situation vacant, so we did a lot of discussion regarding that also. So please just revise your advertisements here. Go through situation, Vacant advertisement. So we did an advertisement for a teacher, we did for a manager, we did for an instructor, isn't it? Right? An accountant. So many things that we had done for. Right? Okay. A front uh, desk office manager, isn't it? Right? A receptionist, a counselor. So many things are there. We have discussed them in the situation vacant advertisement. This so when we start with a job application discussion, I want you to go through those advertisements once again, so you will know how to write these academic qualifications. And uh, right, so today we have uh, our wait. I, I just uh, sent a message also regarding. Right, uh, yes, so here, so please just go through your situation, make it at a distance so that you'll be able to get to this correct. It's a very lengthy process that you have to, and you just have to note down, note down, and write it, write it, write it, and make sure that each one of you has the format of your application. Very scoring. It's a question where you can easily score full marks. Your formal letter is correct, and if your academic qualifications are correct, I don't think so there's any way that your marks they can be deducted because of course to the point right you can't go on elaborating unnecessarily you can't go picking around the bush what is there is there and that's it it's the best part of job applications they are very very scoring so we'll continue with that discussion in the next period okay right so be ready with that